All right. Welcome back to Quest for Faith with Brian. And today I got a special guest, Tatiana, who we're going to interview her about her conversion story and uh, really excited to dive into to her journey to, to the Catholic Church. Um, but one thing I wanted to bring up because I just launched it is I do have a merch store now and I'm wearing one of the shirts. Uh, I got the uh, first part of the um, Hail Mary on this one and I got a few other uh, um, shirts on there and some stickers. I'm trying to come up with some cool stuff and uh, also a sweatshirt that my one of my kids designed. So go check it out. Uh, hopefully you guys will like it. If you have any questions, shoot me an email and I'll be more than happy to help you out with any of that. So without further ado, let's welcome Tatiana. Welcome to my channel. I'm really excited to talk with you. Um, full transparency, we started talking and I realized I didn't hit record. So this is uh, take two. And <laughs> We might not repeat that whole conversation, but right, it, it right. was great. It was absolutely great. But I'm excited to check out your merch store and especially the sweatshirt that your your child designed. Yeah, he designed one and it says uh, Faith, Hope and Charity and has a rosary around it. Oh, and so it's really cool. And so he was all proud to wear that to baseball and out out around town. He's like, I designed this. <laughs> so That's um precious. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So yeah, it's it's I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I've only had a few people look at it, but I haven't really talked about it on my channel yet. So who knows? Um, but welcome. And crazy enough, I didn't know this, but Tatiana has been a longtime subscriber to my channel. Um, she said uh, she was looking through it and I popped up early on there. And she got to suffer through my early videos, which were <laughs> to me still cringe, but they still get a lot of views so i'm not ever going to take them down because i still think i said valid stuff there i just stumbled over my words way too much so um but well, i thought you looked a little bit like my brother and i'm like wow i gotta subscribe because he looks a little <laughs> bit like my brother and they could pass <laughs> off his cousins so <laughs> awesome yeah so um yeah let's kind of let's dive into your story um and and so for everyone watching um, I know you've done interviews on other channels and you're going to be starting a channel soon. And uh, I'm going to be, she's going to interview me after we're done here. And uh, so when she sends me the link for, to her new channel, she's going to be creating, I will definitely be putting that in the description below and I'll be adding you, I'll add you to the title too. Um, so please go over to her channel and support her. We, we love Catholic content. The more the merrier, um, so I'm really excited to have you on and talk with about all of this. So, um, let's kind of start off in the beginning. Like, where'd you grow up? How did you grow up? Did you grow up in a faith-based house? Like, what was your childhood like? My childhood was extremely religious. So my dad is a Ukrainian Catholic priest. And okay. in the Eastern Rite, there are over 20 different kind of Eastern Rites in the Catholic Church. They all can get married as long as they're married before ordination. Yep. It would be weird if after you're a priest, now you're dating your parishioners, but if you get married beforehand. So and my parents are from uh, Eastern Europe, former Yugoslavia, and as a little child, he had a very strong vision, light kind of pushed him to the ground. And when he got up, he knew it was called to the vocation of priesthood. So at age 13, he left on a train, went to Rome, and studied in the Vatican from age 13 to 28, off and on. And wow. he's extremely intelligent. He was very well formed. And he is a very, very good man. Uh, there's the way he is outside is the way he is inside. He's like a very pure, innocent child who is so smart. <laughs> it's, it's insane. And yeah, so I was really blessed to have a father who was a priest. Now, when my mom and dad, uh, er, they were called to do missionary work in Canada. So they moved to, and like my mom was pregnant with me at the time, but they decided okay. to go to a very rural prairie northern part of Saskatchewan, Canada, where it was very difficult to get priests to commit to go there. 
So they went as missionary work, max three years, didn't want to be here longer. You know, they had a great life back home. And and it was tough. Uh, there were a lot of persecutions. On Is it family. mainly like Mennonites up there or I'm going off of very little knowledge of Canada, but go ahead. Uh, in, in the prairie, most people are farmers. And so mm -hmm. there were huge mix of different kinds like most people were ukrainian or polish okay or cool maybe some german descent my area some chinese but for the most part people were slavic of origin okay. so it'd be you know either orthodox or orthodox catholic. or catholic yeah but there were a lot of like united church there were other kind of community churches and mm -hmm. of christianity that were there so it's a very small town uh, okay. There were about four or five hundred people, and I was the only girl in my class that lived in town. So most of my time was by myself or playing with my little siblings. And I grew up in a very kind of. So how many siblings do you have? I'm the oldest of four. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, so it was very pure, innocent, not a lot of TV, not a lot of music, a lot of silence. And that was my upbringing. However, because my dad was a priest and also a dean for the district, I saw an enormous amount of bishops, other priests, nuns, people coming through, staying overnight. And and they were just normal people. So mm -hmm. for me, I saw no difference. It was just a vocation, a career, like someone is a farmer or a cop or, you know, grocery store. Yeah. There was no weirdness in my mind that there was a priest in my family. And I just didn't know it was different or unique for people right. to hear that. Um, and then in... So we did a lot. So our faith growing up, it was very important to my parents. They were, like I said, persecuted, interrogated, had all their stuff confiscated and lost multiple times. You know, there's a nonstop persecution of. Yeah, that. in Canada, it's even worse now. I mean, it's, and, it's and even it, ramping up. Back yeah. home in Yugoslavia, too. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, but they didn't talk too much about their relationship with God. They more just lived out the gospel. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was lost on me. So I, I did all the right things. I believed in God, but he was over there and not here. Right. And I didn't connect to him. I, so one, one question I have, because my, my wife's a preacher's kid and my mom was a preacher's kid. And so, uh, they both had their rebellious streaks in them. And, but I'm wondering if you kind of had the same experience where like my, my wife tells stories about how hard it was being a preacher's kid because they'd be on vacation and somebody would call and be like, Hey, we, somebody died. We need this funeral and he's the only one to do it. And so they'd have to literally cancel their vacation, turn around and drive back home. And like, just things like that. Cause the, the church always came first. Did you kind of experience that too? Yeah. Well, my dad was, we didn't go on that many trips. So mm -hmm. I didn't experience that much of the cancellations. My mom experienced more of that because she had expected my dad to be home during a certain time. Right. But almost seven days a week, he was called to hospitals, nursing homes. He would drive one hour, two hours away. Uh, he had more than 15 parishes at any Jeez. given point but they were all like little farm yeah because you're cool. out in the rural rural area and yeah and so he drove very far and uh and it was interestingly it wasn't just uh ukrainian catholics that called him to go to hospitals and nursing homes for last rites for it would be orthodox and roman catholic and, mm -hmm. and that, because he was there consistently right. and very engaged and so they felt more comfortable calling him so he was very busy and i rarely saw him outside of being at church or working in the office at home yeah and i think that's difficult and i and like i do the roman catholics there are married priests that are roman catholics but they were 
typically like already ministers at, at their, their converts typically right and, it. yeah and so then it's like well okay we're going to become catholic i still want to be i still want to be a priest and so because like father Longnecker here in i don't know if you know who he is but he's like big on twitter and like i've seen his channel he's he's here in in greenville and he's a married priest but he was an anglican priest before and so it does happen in the Roman Catholic Church, like in the Roman Catholic Rite, but I know it's way more common in in Eastern Rites. Um, and so I, I always find that's an interesting dynamic because you hear that a lot with uh, the scandals in the 80s and 90s with with the priests. They're like, well, they just need to let them get married. But it brings its other difficulties that come along with that. It's not just, you know, it, it, and so it's cool that I because I see it where it works out great for some people, but I think it's hard on the family is just kind of my take on it. It, it was hard. I think it was more hard on my mom. Mm -hmm. and a lot of things that happen inside of the home or even emotionally and, you know, different growing pains. It's not really safe to talk to anybody else outside of the home because we need to, you know, the reputation is yeah. really important also. So we just learned how to bottle up a lot of things and yep. uh, and also be very neutral, like neutral politically, neutral, neutral, neutral um, in, in different things. Just to uphold the reputation of the family was really important. Mm -hmm. uh, but you did mention the rebellious streak. I did have that. Yeah. <laughs> neighbors would tell on me. <laughs> that's awesome i mean and, it's not but you know it's i think it's typical I, I i mean i think we all do that right but it's more like in protestant worlds like preachers kids have a reputation like if you're if you go oh they're a pk kid is typically what what we call them a preacher's kid and it's like oh okay like they know they're probably great like yeah, I mean, it's really funny because in the Protestant world, there is that reputation that preachers' kids are are the crazy party animals, and uh, and so, anyways. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> it felt a little bit like a dual life, um, not intentionally, but mm -hmm. I was, you know, that straight A student, the one who plays all the school sports, volunteering almost every day uh, in different places, working really hard. So I had that straight edge, goody, goody two shoe uh, appeal to me. And I didn't swear. I, I was, you know, I didn't smoke, do drugs. Um, but then on the other side, all that was so, you know, constricted that when I did sneak out of the house or do other things, I would just like, I would just yeah. have to unleash and so i was hyper i drank i was a bartender later on in my life yeah so okay so when did was there a period of time in your like let's say like high school early college like that age range where you started kind of falling away or like did was there something that where something shifted in you um, did you have that type of experience? Yeah. When I, in high school, I started practicing yoga and then okay. in university, I lived with people who didn't practice the faith. And then later on, just through university, um, my yoga practice deepened to the point that it replaced church completely. Right. And I used to call it yoga, my church. It was the place where I would do mantras and meditate and relax and find grounding. On the same time, I would still have that dual life where I would attend uh, Catholic conferences and volunteer for the Catholic Church and still attend Mass occasionally. But there's this other party part of me who wanted to be very worldly. I was looking for all the honors you can get. I was obsessed with getting scholarships in university. And it was I don't know, pulling I, you apart, pulling me apart. Um, yeah. And then I entered a, a somewhat abusive relationship. And during this time, I was poisoned by something that uh, severely uh, started impacting my hormones, my immune system. And then there are a few other things that happened that 
made me very ill. And so uh, this is, I have three degrees. And so this is during medical college, studying to be an MD. And that's when I started seeking more spiritual things to help heal me in the alternative world. So I became obsessed with new age things, mm-hmm. law of attraction, uh, the secret. I started manifesting. I became extremely lucky. I was winning all these things and so convinced that I was in control of my thoughts and I could manifest all these amazing right. things. And the devil was having a great time with me because I bought hook, line, and sinker into it. And I find it interesting that your gateway was really yoga. And I think, cause you'll, I've heard priests say like, you should never do yoga. Like, just don't do it. But at the same time, you'll see it here when somebody says that so many people will push back and they're like, it's just stretching. <laughs> and people don't understand that like yoga is a religious practice. Like if you keep doing it and you go deeper and you get certified and you start like, you know, it's not just stretching. It's deeper than that. But I find it interesting that that was kind of like the gateway into into all this for you, because, I mean, it's kind of like new age and yoga go hand in hand, you know, like the in, individuals I know that are really into yoga, they're totally into crystals, they're totally into like to seances, they're to, you know, like it's it's really kind of interesting. And I I have done yoga, I, I you know, and I did I never really like. I had DVDs on it and I think I did it with uh beach body <laughs> is all I ever did it with like in the house. Like I didn't go to a yoga studio or anything, but um, yeah, I find it, it's kind of interesting. And I think it's an easy way to, I get the allure of it, right? Because after you're done and you really are working your body out, you're really stretching and you're strengthening things. You feel really good. And then you're like, oh, I need to learn more about this. Oh, look, you can meditate while you're doing it. Oh, and and so it kind of, I see the the allure to it. And I can see how that's an easy gateway into deeper things that you're like, oh, wait, hold up. Where am I now? And then you look back and yeah. Yeah, it was a gateway because now these are the people that I surround myself with and I'm surrounded by that spirituality and that outlook on life. And I was desperately seeking healing. So I start attending conferences and uh, not just yoga conferences, but Ayurvedic conferences. Deepak Chopra is pretty famous and I would go to his things. And that's the first time when I started having out-of-body experiences during the meditations. Wow. And I already just the way that my brain formed throughout my life, it was extremely easy for me to dissociate, derealize, depersonalize, and just, you know, just completely detach from myself. So the out of body experiences started happening. I'm like, wow, this is so cool. I never got into rocks and crystals and tarot cards, but other things started opening up a lot more. Uh, I started uh, by this time, I already finished med school and I'm in residency. And so my, what area of, of special of specialty were you going into? Or did uh, you go pu- into? Pu- public health. Okay. The, yeah, the residency doesn't exist in USA, I don't think. Okay. And I was really desperate. So I started uh, automatic writing and chatteling. And that's yes. when someone's eyes start flittering up and kind of get into this trance and a spirit would write through my hands when I have no clue what I'm writing at all. It's a different, it's not my handwriting. It's someone else's handwriting. It doesn't look like my letters, nothing at all. It's very erratic speed. And I would write things out and in an attempt to heal myself, heal my soul. But also a lot of what was written down was like true and it sounded really good, but it never leads you to Jesus. Now, other people started asking me to do this for them. So that deepened and deepened. And I'm like, wow, this spirituality is really cool. And so I started hanging out with energy healers and I was trained in different techniques. Mm -hmm. And after these trainings, then I would start 
some you know other people can say oh i can see spirits oh neat i want to see spirits too so i'm an overachiever so i do everything possible to learn how to do that also um by this time i'm pretty ill so i had to take a leave of absence from residency and i uh was almost bedridden for about nine months i was fainting breaking doors on my way down i i was could barely function maybe could muster up about one hour of conversation a day max but it was very limited so all i had during that time was to face myself face my micro traumas my macro traumas that had happened throughout my life and really start diving into the spiritual world and it was very humbling and humiliating in a way because i was such a strong workaholic i was obsessed with achievement and here i am i can't do anything yeah. <laughs> it was a very I, dramatic stop i understand that 100 percent. like my uh, not to dive into my wife's stuff but you know she she deals with a lot of um uh, what how would you call it chronic illnesses right um and she says that to me all the time she's like i hate the fact that by the end of the day i have to sit down on the couch and I can't be up doing things because I'm a worker. I like working and like I'm exhausted at the at the end of the day. And um, so I I totally I'm experiencing that on the spouse side of it. So I totally know what you're going through, um, at least uh, at least why, someone I love going through the same thing. And it's like, man, it's tough. It's really tough to go through something like that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so. Here I am, I have really nothing to do except to be, face all my emotions of having everything I ever loved ripped away from me. And that opened me up to meditating and self-hypnosis and developing all these other techniques and fine tuning it. So I did start seeing spirits and they were uh, not of God, uh, but I didn't know that. I just thought it was really so, cool. So kind of going back just a little bit, like, did you ever get an inkling that like when you're doing the writings and did it freak you out or did it just make you excited? Like when you it first started doing that? At the beginning, it made me excited, but it was also it was so new to me and i'm a learner i love learning mm -hmm. and so for me it was more oh, there's a part of life that i don't even know about and then i started realizing the spiritual world is so much more vast interesting than the material world it helped me detach from the material things of this world because whatever happens in the spiritual life is so far beyond what our physical senses can experience that I maybe had conscience that was dulled down by mortal sin mm -hmm. uh, talking to me, but this desire for learning and exploring. Well, and healing, right? Like, and healing was huge. Yeah, I think that that's a big thing. And, and I think it's, I think it's understandable, right? Like you're, you're studying medicine, right? You're like, I should be able to figure this out. I'm not seeing answers here okay, maybe I can find the answers here. And I, I want to be back to normal. Right? Yeah. I'm sure that was going through your head. And it's like, Oh, this might do it because this stuff is this is crazy what's happening. I need to keep pushing because this might give me the answers I need. Yeah, exactly. Uh, eventually, I did get diagnosed well, but it's once again, manifested perfect timing. <laughs> right? So who helped me um, and sponsored a trip to the Mayo Clinic and they they diagnosed me correctly or properly and did a lot of tests and very, very thankful for that because this person also started taking me to Catholic Church that maintained oh. that I wouldn't have gone to anyways, but just started, you know, fertilizing that seed right inside of me. So uh, you were talking about you were starting to see spirits. And so yeah. Kind of what what was that like? I 
it's more like there's an awareness of a presence uh, that would be at the foot of my bed or next to my side. And then in my mind's eye, I would see kind of like a vague outline or I would see lights or darkness. And sometimes it would just be like a knowledge infusion of this beautiful vision of someone like an archangel or something like a succubus, mm -hmm. for example, it was, it was so beautiful. And, uh, some of them felt creepy, but I felt like I had to obey. So they would lead me into the hallways. It would lead me into the basement in the middle of the night and uh, lead me through these energy kind of weird motions, fields. fields and listening to, I would put like a shamanic drum in the background, boom, 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 boom. And they'd be guiding me through these movements and trances uh yeah it <laughs> that's creepy right yeah and but i get and, where you're coming from like your state of mind at this point right you're basically bedridden yeah and it's like oh my gosh the this might be the answer yeah a little bit i was doing everything i could like biohacking everything i could think of i was taking stem cells exosomes i was really trying mm -hmm. to get back to my old life uh, but this started attracting more women to my house that were really into new age movements. And they would go through different kind of mantras, like I am a goddess, I'm a goddess. And there are certain things like that I could not say. And I think it's because I'm a baptized child of the true God. Mm -hmm. uh, he would prevent me from saying certain things. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. And uh yeah so they're they're like speaking in tongues there's always an inversion so lots of those things did i always find this interesting because i forget actually we were talking about it on the non-recorded section we we're talking <laughs> about the exorcist file and um there's one where he's talking about the history of the ouija board and i've heard other interviews about the like the new age type stuff and how in the 1800s women around the the entire united states were just all into it and mm -hmm. i i don't see not that there aren't men that are into this right but i find it interesting that you typically hear about women being more into this type of stuff than men and i wonder if what that i don't know did you is that an accurate kind of um perception of it like, not that there's not, but it's like, if you're saying like, there's yeah. 10 people that are into it, six to seven of them are going to be women. And then there's a few guys. Yeah, I like, I've never played with a Ouija board. Uh, well, I'm not just Ouija, I'm just saying like new age stuff in general. The new age stuff. It In general, it seems to be a lot of females. Yeah, because I there's uh, someone called Joe Dispenza. There was a conference, and uh, during the pandemic, there was more than two thousand people at it in Mexico, and there was a good mix of girls and guys. So I think the at the very big foundation, maybe it's more women, but then as you start climbing higher. Uh, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, male entrepreneurs that are into yeah. new age because they like to manifest things and Make get that money. richer, more powerful, have the most beautiful woman, and they want that kundalini experience. Uh, so I, I actually did see a lot of entrepreneurs who, who do seek it. Yeah. And I think that not to get into politics, but I think a lot of the stuff we see in the world today like you that's what these leaders are into like i just i just did a video i haven't released it yet but i recorded this morning about the olympics and the uh and that whole uh thing on on the uh, last supper but i was kind of pointing out it, on this video that that's not new like we've seen this before and i pulled up a video on a uh it was a tunnel opening in in switzerland uh eight years ago nine years ago and it was this entire pagan ceremony like it was 
crazy watching this. And I remember seeing it eight, nine years ago going, what in the world? And like, you see it in halftime shows of the Super Bowl. You see stuff like it's everywhere. And like, I think there, you're right. Like, it, like there's a lot of powerful people that want the power and wealth and fame and all that stuff that really dive into this because it's like, Oh, if I do this, then I get this. And that's what they're doing it for. I used to be in a relationship for many years with an extremely political family in some of the highest levels of government here in Canada. And I would agree with what you say. Uh, the things that I've seen and experienced is just a little haunting you know, the the iceberg. <laughs> but it's still kind of haunting to think that, that it's like our world leaders and head of government they're not generally Christians, you know, like they're, they're, that's not what they're there for. Um, yeah. and I think that's kind of haunting, but anyway, sorry. Or uh, not practicing the faith, you know, they yeah, might be Christian they're like token faith. Catholics are token Christians and they, yeah. to get the votes for the, <laughs> you know, like, Oh, well, I, yeah, I, I grew up Catholic. Okay, cool. I'll get the Catholic vote or I grew up, you know, whatever. Um, but behind closed doors and now I, I just feel like now it's just more brazen. Like it's no longer behind closed doors. They're just like, yep, nope, that's what I do. That's what I Wizard am. Wizard of Oz came out. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And There's no so, hiding it. Yeah, yeah. Like my my whole point of the, the video that I'll 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 release here soon is like I wasn't shocked. Like this wasn't a shocking thing to see. I just think now they're just so more brazen and outspoken about just mocking God and mocking Christianity and especially Catholics. Um, so anyways. And I think they've, they've groomed society to accept it. So it's not as scandalous because for the last, you know, five, six decades of TV, music, movies, constantly attacking the church and every commandment is broken on tv regularly every, so it breaks, every it sitcom. Breaks down people's um conscience it becomes normalized and do, 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 look how fast yeah. society has changed and people go whoa our country isn't the same it was 10 years ago <laughs> but, You're like yeah yeah i mean even for me like um like i never dove deep into new age right but i was curious mm -hmm. like because i like I said, I, I did yoga in my apartments, right? Like just to, as part of my workout routine. But I was fascinated with any uh, nonfiction book that had anything to do with new age, like witches, vampires, like the, and I remember when I kind of, no, I still was reading stuff like that after that. But one of the ones that I, I loved the series until I got to one book was like the Anne Rice books, the Vampire Chronicles, right? With like Lestat. And do you ever see the movie uh, Interview with the Vampire? I with really Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt. Okay. So, like, there's this whole series of books she writes that follows these one vampire, Lestat. Uh, can't say S's sometimes. <laughs> Um, just, I'm not even going to try. I will, my, my brain will not let me do it, but it was weird because I was totally into these books and I was like, these are so much fun to read until I got to one book and it was titled, uh, Moloch. Oh. And it was the devil came to recruit Lestat. And I got halfway through the book and I was like, this is so evilly awful. I can't handle this. And then I kind of just stopped. I, 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 that's the only book I think I've ever gotten a good portion of the way into it when I was just like, no, like I'm done. Like I can't do this anymore. And, um, so it's kind of like, I feel like if you are a baptized Christian, there's things that eventually like you'll hit your wall where it's like, nope, I can't go past that. Even though I'm curious, like I am, I can't go. I mean, I think everyone's different, but, um, I still was kind of totally curious and reading whatever books I could find on that, st on that stuff, not like learning how to do it, but reading fiction. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I was totally into fiction books that had everything to do with that stuff. Um, but, it, but it's that slippery slope. And yeah. 
your thoughts change over time of exposure to different things. And that's why God, like the scriptures tell us to meditate on his law day and night to pray to him all day, like not yeah. waste our times with these things. And looking so, back, like that was a period of time where I had my darkest, not, not that I didn't believe, right? Like I knew God was real. I knew Jesus was real. I knew all that. Like I believe that stuff, but I was completely, re re oh, not rejecting, but I was like, whatever. Like, it's just <laughs> like, who cares? But that was the period of time I was in when I was consuming that garbage. And it was like, I, like now looking back and talking to you, it's making it click that, oh yeah, that was probably a, a catalyst to what I was experiencing spiritually during that time because I was so into reading all that type of stuff. But it gives authority. It opens up different portals that, because mm -hmm. uh, they're very, well, if you listen to the exorcist files, uh, it gives them legal authority in the supernatural yeah. world to play with that part of your life and start and they can implant thoughts they can manipulate our emotions and so if you had dark thoughts during that time i'm sorry to hear that but that might have contributed yeah i'm sure it did and um i'm sure it did for sure so but let's get back to your story because i could talk about this stuff obviously all day so but so you're seeing spirits finally and 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 they're leading you in different places how long did that go on um uh this was a few years and uh like my parents they still lovely people praying a lot but they they lived so far like three four hours away and we lived in a different city so they weren't aware of a lot of what i was going through and then uh what happened is i during the pandemic, at the very, very beginning, my new boyfriend, he that I was with, uh, we had, uh, like, we're married now, but um, not not that past relationship. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Different so guy. Broke up yeah. with that guy, met your husband. Okay. He's a, he's a wonderful you. man. So he, I didn't know he was came from a Christian background at all. Uh, he didn't seem like it, didn't live like it. But at the beginning of the pandemic, anxiety took over and it was so strong and nothing would touch it. So he started reading the Bible out loud. Hmm. And this triggered me because I believed in God. But I thought this new age Christ consciousness was more real than what he was reading out loud. And I was I had spiritual pride where I thought all this mumbo jumbo is the truth not scripture and so he would read it out loud and i would be triggered but uh i tried to prove him wrong <laughs> i spent the next uh, six months and i know how to study so i studied really really hard which ended up in tears flying down my face every night because i could not prove jesus wrong the more i like with a lawyer type mind yeah you know it just it, it convicted me we'll get into that but that was me with the catholic church too so yeah <laughs> i know where you're coming from exactly on this and it was frustrating but also humbling and it was breaking down my defenses little by little and something started happening inside of me i lost all desire for this manifestation love i had a vision board with my kundalini awakening that i yes. did get I, you know i was so afraid of snakes i used to draw snakes so i'd be less afraid of this kundalini awakening i threw away all of that um any yoga mats i just got rid of it because the more i studied scripture the more alive it became then in october of that first year of the pandemic i I was still astral projecting. Do you know what astral projection uh, is? That's where you can project yourself out, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so like I was astral projecting, I was dabbling in remote viewing. So I still thought that was really cool because I mean, mm -hmm. the government, I the mean, military, they hire remote it viewers. It kind of is cool, but, but the wrong path, but it is cool. It's one yeah. of those things, right? Where you're like, <laughs> what? I could do this? But yeah, that's what you're, that's a doorway. 
<laughs> so uh, one night I was, you know, coming through. So for me, astral projection always goes through a tunnel and the tunnel, some, and then there's a kind of a breakthrough point. And I'm going through this tunnel and I start hearing voices that I knew were evil and not good. And I was terrified and I needed it to stop. Something in my subconscious from way long from me studying about Jesus said, if you're having a bad dream, say the name of Jesus out loud. And so I, you know, with my thoughts said Jesus. Yeah. And there was a presence of peace that was so strong. It took me and it bent the tunnel and it took me back into my body. A very, very very strong sense of peace and I just whoa kind of convulsed back into my body once and it's about three in the morning and I shot open my eyes and so my partner's next to me I said he's real Jesus is real you don't get it he's real it's all real and I I just knew it was an instant reversion like that it was so fast and from that day I have been reading scripture every day and it's been three and a half years and my partner and I, we, every day we read scripture and it's amazing. And, and before, like in the Catholic church, we hear nonstop, you know, the epistles and other epistle yeah. proverbs, you hear Psalms, we hear the gospel. And I mean, the whole, especially the, the divine liturgy, liturgy is life yeah. is Bible. But it fell on deaf ears. I was like the sower who uh, put seed on the ground mm -hmm. and the there was no roots or devoured by the thorns. That was me. Nothing really landed. And then all of a sudden, scriptures were alive and I believed every word. And it was such a different life. I. That sorry. is fantastic. I mean, so full circle and I'm bringing my wife back into this because you're uh, I don't know why it's just reminded me of her, but she's she always kind of says she's got a sixth sense because she'll have a feeling something's about to happen and it does happen or she can tell when somebody's sick, like we'll be out and about and she's like, that person's sick, don't go near them. I'm like, what? How how do you know this? Right. Or she'll get senses of people's. Like she, the story she told me, she went to when she was in her early twenties, she went to a Metallica concert and she's like, the music was cool, but the people there, you just felt this aura of evil just all around me. And it scared me half to death during the concert. And so she's always, she's always had these type of experiences where it's like, she's more tapped into what's happening around her spiritually than I ever have been. I feel like I'm a numb idiot when it comes to that. And so I think it's always so cool to hear these stories because never had anything like that. It's always been kind of like this intellectual then to the heart type deal for me. Um, so I think it's so cool that you had that type of experience. And I think it's just, it, it it's interesting to me with in the world we live in when so many people are either going new age or the older pagan religions and bringing them back or atheists. And it's like, people don't understand this battle, this spiritual battle that we really are in that is all around us all the time. And, and it's it, stories like yours help people see a window into that, right? Like it's, it, it's so important to hear these stories because for idiots like me that can't like, just, I don't know. I'm just not, I, I don't have it right. Like I, I, and maybe I'm, maybe there's a reason I couldn't handle it is why I don't have it. Um, but I think it's so important to hear that because it really is like there's there are evils out there. There's evil spirits out there that manifest as nice angels and, you know, but all of that stuff is all throughout our society. And it's all fun and games until, oh, my gosh, now I'm now I've gone too far. Right. And um, then you dive into the possession and all that kind of stuff. But um, that is so fascinating and i think it's interesting you reading scripture because it is the word of god and uh, that's really 
I and I'm so I I see the tide turning in the Catholic faith where more and more people are getting more and more familiar with scripture. Um, because that was always, I mean, even my family, they're they they just think that no Catholics understand anything in the Bible, and that's why they're Catholic. Um, <laughs> and I'm laughing at them going, Y'all taught me, like I know scripture. Um, but I think it, that is putting on our armor, reading scripture, understanding of faith, praying all the time. Um, and I think it's such a it's such a weapon against evil that we don't we do need to understand that. And so hearing stories like yours, I think, is very, uh, very helpful because the rest of us that don't have those type of experiences need to heed warning. Right. Like it, it's a warning sign like, yeah, this is real. Like these things are real. Christ is real. It's a battle and it's our choice what which way we want to go with it. Yeah. I'll I'll just wrap up how I came back to the Catholic Church. Yeah, no, keep I... going. We don't have to wrap up anytime okay. soon, but go oh, ahead. Okay. I'm I... I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I love stories like this because for a lot of people out there, I don't think they ever really they can look back on their life and see where, oh wait, no, that there was definitely an influence on me at that point. And when we interview, I'll I'll talk about one situation I had. But, um, but I think for a lot of people, it's just, they're living their lives or like, whatever. Yeah. I go to church on Sunday, but no, it's serious. Like there's, oh. there's, there's stakes and it's your soul at stake. It's not just, you know, money and power. Yeah. Well, for, for you, um, you say that you have less of these spiritual experiences compared to your wife. My husband's the same way. But I say, Jesus says, blessed are those who have never seen and still believe. And yeah, so I, I need I need to hear that. <laughs> you know, some people need a little bit more of that, the spiritual cookies. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, I had this conversation with my wife a few months ago. And, but then I concluded, like, no, I don't want to have one of those because you you see those you hear these experiences where people have like mary shows up to them right and or or something like that right and it's like astronaut like massive life change happens after that yeah and if god wants me to experience that fantastic great i'm i'm all for it scared out of my mind but let's do it but i think you know i was we were talking about it and i'm like you know I don't know. Like, I think I'm good. <laughs> like, I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep trying. But, you know, if if I'm just, I'm just me, I'm good. Um, because I think, I think it is like exactly like how you experience when you see it and you're like, oh my gosh. And everything changes for you in an instant where you spent years ignoring it. And, and now I know about the evil in the world because I had grown up in, a way where it, speak no evil, see no evil. So that was really sheltered from me. And now I'm very acutely aware of the spiritual battle. And you had talked about preferring maybe not to experience those things. So if you've heard of chakras, my mm -hmm. chakras, uh, not all, but two of them in particular were wide open. And one of them was this part right here. Mm -hmm. People call it the third eye, the pineal gland. <laughs> mine was pretty bright so different people who are seers they they're like wow it's so brilliant there's so many colors but after I had this beautiful experience with God or um I prayed to God for him to close it and these people are still my friends so one of them said what happened to your forehead I'm like what do you mean she's like the it, 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 there's like a block that's about an inch thick over top of your forehead. It's wow. blocking the chakra. And she said, what, what happened? I said, well, I prayed to God to close it. Why would you do that? Like, well, <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want all of these things anymore. And, and for the next year and a half, I still had a lot of visions, but they reduced in intensity and in, in frequency and I think it's really, really good because now God, he He gave me what I need. I, I was so extreme of a personality. I needed something extreme. You, and had, now you had to get the 
the spiritual two by four to the back of the head, so to yeah. speak. Yeah, I need I needed something to just slam me down. And he's a perfect chastiser. He's a very good parent. God is a great parent. Mm -hmm. He gives us exactly what medicine we need. And so I uh, am now just trying to do the simple things. Simplicity, obedience, just virtues, learning about self-sacrifice and self-denial and just, you know, building up routines of prayer and just just a simple, simple life. Not all drama and glitzy and glamour. No. Nope. Yeah. If you look at me now, I'm pretty simple. <laughs> well, that's that is fantastic. So are you and your husband is he Catholic or no. so he You're came just... from a very anti Catholic family. There mm -hmm. is uh, the highest levels of Freemasons on, you know, both sides. Yeah. That, generationally and yeah so we we didn't go to a catholic church and he didn't go to church at all but i i wanted to go really bad and during covid it was hard to get into different places because we had to sign up weeks in advance and there's mm -hmm. all these restrictions so i went to i'm not sure what denomination it was pentecostal baptist i i don't know but right. that's the one i started going to and then we left canada a few weeks later and uh spent the next like three actually i just got back a couple months ago but we spent the next several years in central america and usa and mexico and other places and so i attended uh non-denominational evangelical churches but i still had a lot of uh retaliating forces because when a child of god was you know the prodigal son is now coming back the the they're still fighting for you they're still fighting for me and a lot of things are not sanctified in my life yet so i started attending evangelical deliverance ministries and these creeped me out uh, for different reasons I won't get into. And I became friends with some of them, but I saw they were constantly burning out. And I think they were burning out because maybe they didn't know the proper protocols and legal strongholds and prayers that, you know, 2000 years of Catholic church experience teaches. Right. The, and uh, so they might have had more retaliation. But while I was watching also on YouTube, a lot of different deliverance ministries, because I did need deliverance qu quite a bit, uh, exorcism started popping up. Mm -hmm. And that's when I began hearing Father Carlos Martin, Father Ripperger, for, you know, Vincent Lambert, all these amazing theologians. And they are so they talk how I like to be talked to. It's very straightforward, very blunt, no wishy-washy, yep. flowery language. Just give me, give me the juice. Yep. And they get straight to it. And I, I liked it. And um, where am I going with this? So, uh, so after uh, listening to Father Ripperger for a while, I ordered his book deliverance prayer for the laity which mm -hmm. helped him. now i still gotta get that i haven't gotten it yet but it's excellent it's an excellent book it's not expensive it's maybe 10 bucks yeah. uh but it's it's a powerhouse so we are down in central america and i you had mentioned a uh, vision of mary so that mm -hmm. was my one and only vision of mary I tended to swim in the morning and usually the lane swim is packed so many people because by 9 10 a.m it's too hot and but you know so it's early lane swimming is usually very busy I went out one morning and there was no one there at all hmm. and I felt just like this not a force, but like a pressure that made me want to lay down. So I laid down and my eyes are open and I saw these swirling clouds and many colors. And there was a woman that appeared that was extremely beautiful, 
wearing white and so beautiful. I, I, I didn't know who, like, maybe it was Mary, maybe it was someone else, but it, it was incredible. And it just lasted a few seconds. And I looked down at myself and with my spiritual eyes, I saw that my soul was dressed in the most gross, dirty, stinky garments ever. <laughs> it was such a contrast from this person I had seen above. Talk and about the duality you were talking about, how you had to live your life when you were younger, right? Like it was still going on and you saw it in that vision probably yeah and so these heavenly attendants they were um almost like changing my robes into something a little bit cleaner and i it, me who had meditated manifested visualized a lot i couldn't alter anything in this vision i couldn't superimpose jewelry on myself i couldn't change anything i was just stuck watching what was happening. I looked back up where this lady was and she was gone, but there was a sacred heart of Jesus that I had recognized because that was my first Catholic parish I attended when I was a little girl. And a single blood drop came down. And in these visions, it's uh, so like you could probably stare at this one blood drop for a hundred years and not get bored. It, it's so perfect. And so it lands on my heart and I start having a real deliverance or maybe it's an exorcism. I don't know, but I started shaking and I'm on the cot in, uh, this is at the U hotel in Panama. And I was shaking, but I also knew I had free will. So at any point in time, I could have stopped it if I wanted to. But this gentle love was saying, like, do you wish to continue? And I kept saying yes. So after a few minutes, I stopped. And maybe two minutes later, people started coming. What? It's the wildest thing. So I think God was helping me there. But I had also started attending Catholic Church because in Latin countries and in probably even USA, evangelical churches aren't every day. They don't they have no it's just Sundays. Sundays, yeah. Sunday Maybe. morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday. That's yeah. typically I mean, that was my my schedule growing up. But yeah. And I wanted to go almost every day. And it's only a Catholic church that has the right form of worship every day. So mm -hmm. I was attending these and the Holy Spirit wouldn't let me get communion until I started confession. It was, and I didn't even, I don't know why I wasn't well catechized when I was a kid. It, it should have been a no brainer for me, but you can't right. receive in a state of mortal sin. And so I felt like God was just guiding me like, no, you come every day, but you have to get confession. And I did. And so this deliverance happened shortly after I started going to Catholic church on a daily basis and going to confession. That is, that is fantastic. I it's mean, cool. that is so cool. And, and I mean, I think it just goes back to to scripture that the, the blood of Jesus washes our souls, right? I mean, yeah. it's not this. What did uh, Luther say that it was like we're we're it's like we're, our souls are covered in white snow? No, Christ cleans our souls, and as long as we choose to stay out of mortal sin, our souls are nice and clean. Not that we don't have attachments to sin still, but that you know, we're, we're one with him, one with his family and one with in the body of Christ. And I think that, man, that is such a cool story. So it continues. <laughs> yeah. So but, you're back in Canada now. Are you, or yeah, so, so after that experience, I, it, I had a locution, which is God's voice saying, you're going to get married next week, next weekend. And I laughed because that was impossible. I was flying alone to a different country. I wasn't going to be with my partner and he didn't want to get married. I didn't want to get married. So I just thought that was ridiculous. And I, um, 
I went to a coffee shop that I felt like, you know, the Holy Spirit was guiding me to cross the street. I go to the, this coffee shop. I open up this Father Ripperger exorcism book. And these two people right next to my table, they were about my age. They were Catholic and they were very well catechized. They attend an ordinary at church. Okay, we chatted yeah. for a few hours. And in that conversation, one of them gave me a miraculous medal and another one gave me a rosary. And then the guy said, you just got married. Like married. Oh, yes. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. God has an amazing sense of humor. So right. I married that weekend. And actually that Saturday, uh, someone else gave me the green scapular. And then one year later, uh, my husband and I actually did get married, like exactly one year later. Uh, so that was amazing. So that was the beginning of me praying the rosary every day, uh, Divine Mercy Chaplet that uh, just kind of deepened my faith. And I am very, very hard on believing things and I question things a lot and might try to out argue things but the more i study the catholic faith the catechism this this is real this is gold yeah. this is amazing and so we we came back to canada and we're going to settle down here but yeah um, my husband he's not catholic but he attends daily mass with me he prays the daily rosary the daily oh, he's church. on his way and and he's amazing and you know i i don't pressure him force him we have a very good relationship yes. Yep. Yeah, and, yeah, he's awesome. It, he'll he'll get there in his own time when the Lord wants him to, you know. And I think uh, that's such a beautiful story because uh, I it's great looking back and seeing how God works in your life, right? And all these different things that happen that you're like, oh, if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't have met him. If that, you know, um, if I hadn't have been staying in Panama, maybe that vision wouldn't have happened, right? If you hadn't have been in South America. I mean, I guess even in the in the U.S., you still would have had to go to a Catholic or Orthodox church to be able to go to mass every day, yeah. um, you know, so but that draw that kept pulling you there back home. And um, and I think it's. It's so amazing when you when I talk to people that grew up Catholic, fell away and come back. And there's stories of like, oh, wait, no, all this stuff that I learned when I was a kid that I saw, right? Like, I might not have learned it. Oh, wait, that was true. And it just makes you more fired up for your faith. And, oh, wait, no, this is great. I need to pray the rosary every day. I need to do the Divine Mercy Chaplet. But by the way, can I say the Divine Mercy Chaplet, I know there's a lot of traditionalists that get all upset over that. That thing is so awesome. I love, like... I've actually started during the, so after the, cause I go to a Novus Ordo church, like we, my church has Latin and Novus Ordo, but we typically go to the Novus Ordo mass. But, um, I typically, I've started doing the divine mercy chaplet once they, once all the, once they start passing or once they, we start going up to take the Eucharist. So it's like, I can typically get it in by the time everybody like, you know, by the time we're done, but I, I don't know. I, it's something I've started doing recently because I love doing it because I'm focusing on the sacrifice of Christ, right? Like it gets me in that mindset of like, no, this is legit. Like this is where heaven and earth, the veil opens here on the altar and I get to receive Christ. And it's such a beautiful devotion that I, more and more people I think need to start, need to do along with the with with the rosary like you do both those together and it's just like something different happens because i recently just started doing both those at mm -hmm. this uh, uh, every day and um and like anyone like there's there's like oh wait i haven't done it in two days what am i doing and i have to get back to it oh it's been a week okay let me get back on it and you have to you know it's a muscle you have to to learn to just oh wait it's 7 a.m i'm gonna do these you know and at least that's how I have to do it. I can't, I have to have a scheduled time or I'll forget about it. Yeah, but. routine is important. So I'm kind of anti-routine in my psychology. So routine is so important for me. And I feel like I'm spiritually attacked. 
every time I that routine part comes up when I know it's yeah. 3 a.m., 9 a.m., 3 a.m., 12 noon, like I have different things that I do throughout the day and it's like this glaze comes over or really distracted or it's you start desk it. scrolling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh wait. Oh, great. That was my time to pray. And I, and I literally wasted my time. Now I have to go to work or, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, that happens to me too. So you're not alone on that one. Yeah. But just, yeah, just in conclusion, uh, my, yeah, first Saturdays, first Fridays, just the devotion, the appreciation for the true faith, the true beauty, the goodness and and just realizing all the propaganda that has been spoon fed into me into secular society is really interesting and reading the history of the church and appreciating the saints it's mind blowing i feel like i can live 8000 years and not even soak up everything you know the yeah. church that the and I, you hear this up. a lot from protestant converts but it's like i felt like as a protestant like the it was like i was playing in the shallow water and then when i converted it was like oh no now i'm in the middle of the ocean like it's so deep our faith is so deep and so amazing and so wondrous uh that there's so much more there than what i was getting before yeah. and it, it's it's amazing like and i know that my entire life even if i spent all day long studying which i don't have time to do that but if i could I still would not know anything by the time I, by the time my life was over because there's so much there. Yeah. And I felt pretty insecure before and now I'm so much more secure my my thoughts, my every I'm a lot more grounded. I feel um really connected to the mystical body of Christ. Even just learning that you know in the past learning about saints would have been so boring to me and now I'm like wow, these are my brothers. These are my sisters, St. Peter, yeah. St. Peter, St. Peter, St. Peter, they're my bros. Like, this is great. I feel like a part of a wonderful family and it's not just a distant intellectual thing. I, I feel really that I'm part the cloud of hosts around of us, body of Christ with Christ as the head. It's and, and appreciating a monarchy structure. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's, my oldest son is going to love like that line changing. that you just said that. The old man so. and the new man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that that is, I agree with you 100% on that. It's it's amazing. And I am so grateful for actually that you reached out to me because this is awesome. Like I uh, I love this story that your, your conversion story or reversion story, I keep saying that wrong, but it, I mean, it's kind of both, right? I mean, uh growing up catholic falling away coming back going through all that spiritual temptation and then getting hit with a two by four by christ <laughs> fantastic you know uh i needed a big fall yeah i, I needed it yeah and it, and it just goes to show he knows exactly what we need you know, and I think it goes to show like even your, your experience there uh, beside that pool, um, you needed that you needed to see like, wait a second. No, you're not, you're not there yet. And the fact that so, real quick, cause I, I, I know we've been in an hour over an hour now, but when you were saying that you couldn't take the Eucharist, was it just like a feeling like I can't do this when you would go up? And you would you just get a blessing or you would you even I up? I went up a few times, but after a while it started feeling wrong. And mm -hmm. then there was an I then an idea just popped up from my head, go to confession. I'm like, but I don't even speak Spanish. So how can I go to confession? But it, it was just this idea that wasn't from me. That was a heavenly right. thought that just kept growing more intensely go to confession and i was able to find us someone who spoke in english well enough that i could right go. well and 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 i was there, and now i go every person. week confession's amazing yes i love hearing that <laughs> and it's just it's just like one or two minutes is really fast for me yep. but i i just feel 
the longer I go without it, I've tried going like a month, more than a month without it. And I just feel like I need a spiritual cleansing. Literally, when I come out, it's like everything is brighter. I I feel lighter. It's a psychological shift. And God knows that we're human beings. We're both body and spirit. So we need that relational aspect to hear the words. And also just hearing how often I'm absolved, it really helps me forgive. Because if I've been so forgiven much, it's so easy for me to forgive others. Yes. Really easy. Because it's we we learn by example, by experience, and it's almost second nature to Yeah, I, I've realized that on the just recently, because I I'm drawing a blank on the situation it was, but we we're I, instead of the gossip, I can't stand that person type conversation. It was somebody that was Oh, I wish I could remember the exact thing, but this popped in my head that it's like, I feel sorry for them. I have pity for where they're at. Yeah. And they were, and it was uh, an individual that my, that my wife and I know that were very anti-Catholic, very anti-Christian. And it was like, no, I'm not mad at them at all. I feel pity for them. And I'm not going to hold anything against them because uh, yeah we've been forgiven and we get to go and hear those words of absolution whenever we need it well not whenever we need it because you know there's it's impossible to get confession every single day but i wish i really wish there was confession every day but um but to have that mindset of no like we as catholics we need to act like christ and be forgiving and compassionate towards others even those that are like you're an idiot you're stupid for that you're doing this or that god thing is stupid or you know and and i think it's a testament to you too to still be friends with all your friends that were that are still dabbling in that new age stuff and your testimony to them like they're seeing you live differently and i'm sure they might not have said anything to you but i'm sure they've noticed a difference in you um that they're like yeah. why why is Tatiana so different now? But it's good, a good different, but it's different. Yeah, it's, it's actually harder for me to relate to my old way of life. I'm, I don't go out that much anymore. So I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a whole body too. Like, well, I'm, you I'm, know, I'm married with kids, so I never I'm get to go out. I'm a extrovert. <laughs> no, I am too. Like, don't get me wrong, but it's like, yeah. Now. Yeah. But, well, thank you so much for coming on. This was absolutely fantastic. And I'm so glad we got to talk today. Um, like I said in the beginning, I will have uh, links to her channel that she's going to be starting. So she's interviewing a bunch of people. And, and so she'll be able to pump some, some content out right away. So we'll have links to Tatiana's uh, channel. Make sure you go and subscribe and show her some love when she's starting out. Because she's going to get people in the comments tra trashing her. 100% guaranteed because it happens to all of us. So <laughs> all of us Catholics, let's go to her channel and show her love and support. So thank you, thank you so much for, for coming on. I really do appreciate it. And uh, may God continue to bless you. That's a fabulous story. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. And we will talk to you guys later. Have a good one.